Hi everybody, this is Trish Gray, I'm the Senior Development Manager from O'Reilly School of Technology. I don't know if uh, any of you have attended any of our previous webcasts, but uh, we've had so much fun with it that we're starting a series. Uh, so today we're having Matt here, and on the 15th we're going to have Jonathan Reichenthal talking about uh, what CIOs look for in, uh, in their job candidates. And on the 29th, we're going to be at OzCon at the news desk at 1 p.m., so we hope that you join us there. Uh, but today, I'm here with Matt Roberts. He is our senior web developer, and we're going to be talking about our secret learning weapon, um, Code Runner, which is one of our learning sandboxes. Now, since we started in 97, way back when, uh, the learning sandbox has been central to our learning methodologies, and it's... Uh, come about to be a pretty complex piece of software over the years. We, we utilized Web 2.0 concepts before it was even coined, you know, software as a service, cloud concepts. Uh, we didn't even know the terms were there. Uh, we just did it anyway because that was the best way to do it. Um, but Matt has been tasked with really bringing it into the 21st century, and he's going to talk about uh, what we've learned, what tools that he used, what user interface techniques techniques he used to uh, build this thing. So without further ado, I give you Matt Roberts. Uh, good morning, everyone, or good evening or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, I'm Matt Roberts, and uh, I'm, I'm the guy that uh, created CodeRunner 2. A uh, uh, little bit of background, I, I've worked in web development for uh, about nine years now, and um, I sort of took on CodeRunner 2 because I, I really like the uh, unique design challenges presented by uh, user interface design. Uh, so with that said, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I want to talk about, a little bit about the OST method for, uh, for teaching uh, pedagogy. Um, we want to make sure that students learn by doing. Uh, that means to try and get them in right away, as, as soon as possible, jump in uh, to, to getting into their course content, uh, learning, you know, uh, data types or uh, what HTML is or and, and whatever course they've chosen to, uh, to get into. Um, and, and for that, the, the first 15 minutes are the most vital, meaning that we, we don't want to have the student have to install any software. We want them to be able to jump right in and, and start learning um, uh, whatever it is that they've chosen. Uh, and to that end, we created the Code Runner Sandbox, um, which is the tool Trish just described. Uh, and so to give a little bit of a, a background, I'm going to talk about the original Code Runner first to sort of set up why we needed <laughs> Code Runner 2. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Trish is laughing because Trish was responsible for the co first Code Runner. Here. I, you, you may not know this, but I created the original Code Runner, and I'm about to be roasted for the next no, one. It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first Code Runner was uh, released in 1997. Um, it combined PHP, Perl, C++, HTML, and JavaScript to uh, create one of the first Web 2.0 apps. Um, I, I don't even know if the term was around at the time. I no. believe it was 99, maybe 2000, but it was coin. Um, but uh, there were some problems for students with the original code runner. Um, and I've got to apologize to Trish because I'm in the bag on that <laughs> just a little bit here. Um, this is the first screen uh, students would see upon logging in, and I apologize, the, uh, the next several slides are just going to have static screenshots. Um, it's because the original Code Runner doesn't really work anymore. <laughs> so uh, I had to sort of hack together a version so I could get these shots. Uh, it was difficult to learn. Um, nothing was really familiar. It was pretty new at the time. Uh, it just the, the layout and everything on it, and it only had some very basic functionality. The, uh, Editor, which is the area where, where students would type in and enter code, uh, is that white section segment on the bottom where it says type here, delete these lines first. Uh, that was just an HTML text area, which meant that students just typed in whatever they, they were uh, entering. It would be it um, Java code or JavaScript and HTML. And then they would uh, save the file to get sort of AJAX posted to a, a web service that would save it. But um, because it was just a text area, it didn't really promote good formatting for code. Uh, tabs would actually move the cursor to an element on the page. Um, 
And uh, <laughs> if you notice, there's uh, two select lists there that might be difficult to see, uh, one called mode and one called file name. That was actually how you switched around between editing various files. File name really only had uh, five, you can only have five files open of a specific type at a time. Um, so you can only have five HTML files. And it didn't really say this anywhere, but if you opened a sixth file while well, having five open already, it would sort of erase the contents of that first file and just start over at the beginning. Uh, just to back up a little bit, we already have a question. Oh. What is Code Runner? Oh. And, uh, I, you know, uh, just to uh, give a little overview, uh, Code Runner, the reason there's a split screen uh, there that you see, and you see O'Reilly School of Technology at the top, and you see the, the white text area at the bottom. Um, this is uh, something that we learned over years and years of, uh, of refining our learning methodology is that people learn best when they actually get to try out what they're doing immediately. So this is why we have the split screen here. We created a proprietary learning sandbox so that you can go through the lessons in the top and then have the lessons speak to you and say, try this, try this, try this, try this. And as you're going through them, you're just typing in the bottom, and you're typing in the actual technology being learned. So if you're learning PHP, then the PHP lessons are going to be at the top. You're going to be typing PHP in the bottom, and you're going to be seeing how it works immediately. And you'll be able to practice, 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 and get better at it. So. Uh, I, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Irina, um, no, there was no way to close a file in the original Code Runner. You, you just sort of deleted and then clicked Save As. Uh, and so as Trish said, um, this was the tool that we used originally. Uh, and then, so students have their own uh, actual space um, on, a, on a server, on a server that we maintain. Uh, so there, there was a need for file management. But with the original Code Runner, file management was pretty confusing. Um, I didn't really get a, a bunch of interesting files listed, but you can see in the top half the content uh, panel there. Uh, that's where we, you, you would manage your files, and, and deleting and renaming files as a single click was fairly easy. It did pop up a little JavaScript warning, but and creating a new folder did uh, something similar. But uh, saving and moving files was pretty confusing. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to be. The best uh, As you can see, there's there's a, a source select list and a destination select list, and then two buttons that are copy or move. And then on, on the left one, I've got a, the select list at the top. So that was the, the select list above was the directory you're currently in, and it displayed a hierarchy so that you could click on a previous folder to go back. But you had to, to, to go forward through, to navigate through the hierarchy, you have to click a folder name, then click open folder, and then wait for it to reload. And this was, this was all right if you had a few files and folders, but the way that it was, the way that that worked was basically there was a, a script that built a giant multi-dimensional JavaScript array. And so it would recursively sort of go through all your, everything on your, uh, in your directory, home directory, and build this array. Yeah, I have to defend myself for a second here. That was really cutting edge at the time. It, no, I, I got to admit, <laughs> in 1997, that was the bee's knees. Uh, and this was okay, except for one of our, our poor mentors, uh, he, he had a problem where he had uh, 200 different folders that all had subfolders, and so whenever he, he would use the original Code Runner, this one little pop-up window here took about 15 minutes for him to load because of that recursive directory problem. And then lastly, I guess it, it wouldn't work again because oh, the original Code Runner doesn't work quite so well anymore. Uh, you'll notice at the bottom, there's four buttons. This is at the very bottom on the left. There's editor, which is selected at the moment, and then MySQL, Unix 1, and Unix 2. If you clicked MySQL, Unix 1, or Unix 2, it would launch a Java applet that was a terminal emulator. Now, that thing was actually pretty rad. I really dug that. But because it was an applet, uh, most IT organizations just prevent out applets from loading outright uh, for security reasons. And so we have quite a few um, students who, who work inside a corporate uh, organization or with um, uh, IT groups that sort of prevent them from loading. So they were unable to uh, actually use the terminal, and then they'd have to go in outside, download a different program, which sort of infringed on the whole, don't install anything. You can start right away. 
And those are just the problems for the students. The problems for me were a little bit more complex, uh, as I was the one who was um, desktop support for the original code runner. Yes, I, uh, I have a comment here already from Ben T saying, Designing IDE slash GUI from scratch equals self-inflicted injury, and I have to agree with that <laughs> because, uh, you know, building it myself from 1997, having it evolved, you know, it, it may have been Code Runner 1, but it was like Code Runner 1.37 by the time we, uh, by the time we let it die. So uh, <laughs> I hope someone out there can feel my pain. <laughs> now Matt can. <laughs> Uh, so one of the biggest problems for me was that there was no documentation for the original Code Runner. Uh, anyone who's a developer listening in will tell you that this is a fairly common problem, and it's usually not that big of a deal. Like the, the person who worked for the organization usually put enough comments in there that you can figure it out, or you just spend enough late nights reading through the code. Thankfully, uh, Trish is my boss, so that made it way easier to ask questions about why a decision was made. Or, what was going on, but... Again, I'm sorry. <laughs> no documentation. Uh, but the lack of documentation was really a problem because there was a super complex interaction of technologies. Now, that, that file management window, the one with the copy and move and the two select lists, just that window, PHP was, PHP was used to print out the HTML and JavaScript, and then it would call a C++ script from the command line. We needed to call that C++ script because we had to set a user permission so that we could mm -hmm. then call a Perl script. That Perl script would then build the multidimensional <laughs> JavaScript array and just output it directly. It wouldn't return a string. It would just print it. Mm -hmm. Then it will return back to C++. And <laughs> rather than having the C++ return back to PHP to finish printing out everything, the C++ would finish printing the web page. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of a debugging nightmare because it, it was it took a while to, to debug even the smallest problems because I, it was just uh, tracing execution was very difficult. I feel like all my skeletons are just falling out of my closet right now. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. And then, uh, like, for example, there was um, the, the multiple files, like in the HTML mode, which are five files. That was actually just a, a ton of different hidden iframes, uh, iframes with height and width of zero. So they were used as uh, buffers. And so there was the one you were editing, and then when you switched to another file, JavaScript would copy that to a buffer and then pull content out from another one. <clears throat> so just trying to get my head around that took quite a while. Uh, real quick, Jim N asks, is this the Code Runner version that I was using just one year ago? As a matter of fact, Jim, it was. Yes, it was. If it was the brown and uh, red monstrosity. Yes. Yes. Um, it, it's, it's a matter of it being such a complex piece of software that it's taken this long for us to actually, you know, we, we've done a lot on the back end to overhaul it. You know, we, we converted to PHP, you know, um, and, and so on and so forth, and we would try to ad hoc. But it's kind of like, you know, at this point, as of last year or the year before, we basically tore the whole thing down like a house and just rebuilt a yeah. bit from scratch. So, so while... You know, while you saw that a year ago, it definitely wasn't the same thing that was there in 1997. No, no. <laughs> uh, no, it was not. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about that in, in just a moment, actually. Um, and the, the last problem, really, with it was that there was no way to add new features because it was so complicated that there was, I, I, I mean, it was very difficult to add anything new. Like, one of the first things that I did do was manage to get that, um, that little directory uh, file management window to use uh, Ajax which actually increased load or decreased load time by quite a bit. Uh, so we had, I had to decide at one point, okay, well, if I'm, if I'm in charge of uh, desktop support for this application, what, what needs to be fixed so that I can actually work on it? So the first thing I did was I refactored the code, uh, which I moved most everything into the PHP so that it was just PHP was the only thing outputting any HTML. I removed the Perl from it completely. And then I pared down the C++ scripts to just do the bare minimum that they needed to do so that I could uh, actually get some quicker debugging done. And, and this actually helped a lot, I think, in, within the first two weeks of, of uh, getting through all that, uh, finishing up that project, that I was able to, to squash uh, two dozen bugs or so. Um, but, but then once that was done, we, we sort of had the real problem start, and that was that I started seeing, as I was, again, as I was desktop support, I started to see that 
most of the questions that were coming in from students wasn't wasn't what related to the software. It wasn't oh how does oh I, I can't seem to save a file or, or you know something happened and I lost my content. It was more that they didn't know what to do with the tool they were presented with. And so the the jump right in the first 15 minutes that are so vital to what we do ended up um, being spent trying to learn uh, the tool. And so we found that people would end up. Uh, you know, at not really completing their courses or asking for a refund because they, they couldn't really get into it. And so... And that is the last thing that we want because the whole idea behind our methodology is to get people started and get them... Right. Because if they get started and there aren't any uh, hurdles to cross, then you can really concentrate on what you're learning, which makes our completion rates much higher. <clears throat> And, and students actually end up learning something, which is exactly what I would be hoping for. So what did I need to improve? Uh, well, first and foremost, I identified that I, I wanted, it, I wanted the, the new code runner um, to be familiar. Uh, I, w I wanted to try and use as, common, as many common metaphors as possible, um, like, you know, if a double, what, what, what does a double click do? What do people expect double clicking to do? If you right click on something, what does that happen? If you see a list of files, just at a glance, stuff that we all know from using our, our computers, just the operating system, you know, like Windows or Mac, clicking and dragging files to move them around. Um, what could I use and, and replicate? I really wanted it to be a um, sort of a desktop application that worked in a web page. And then the other thing that I want to improve was the look. Uh, it may be superficial, but CodeRunner 1 was, was old and it looked it, and so it was uh, it was time to uh, update that. So with that, I will present uh, the rest of the presentation. Most of it is going to be me running through an actual live um, Code Runner 2 demo. Yeah, while you're pulling that up, uh, we have a question from Rodrigo okay. A, which is, what is the back end of Code Runner 2, PHP or Java? It is uh, PHP. Yeah, it's, it's basically PHP. Um, we've always had a mishmash of technologies going on in the back end. Um, just because of what had to happen in order to make this work. You know, uh, back before cloud, the cloud became uh, this all-encompassing term, we, we were on the back end uh, creating accounts for students which would not obliterate other accounts and which would be capable of, uh, of running all the software that they created without um, causing any problems for the server themselves. And not only uh, with, did we do this with software, but also with system administration, you know, with database administration. So we, we had to set up virtual root server machines on the back end that people could, could access just from CodeRunner. You know, we never wanted anyone to have to um, get their own Linux box or download their own software. So we basically yeah. clutched it together on the back end so that when someone enrolled, immediately this cascading thing would go through in which they would gain access to Linux boxes, perhaps a Windows machine, which a virtual Windows server um, with, uh, you know, uh, a, a full-fledged ISP on the back, uh, on the back end, uh, yeah. web, web hosting. Um, and so back in the day, you know, this is all based in Linux. Um, now we have a PHP over it originally. I mean, we even, you know, like he said, we use a lot of Perl, we use a lot of C++, uh, a lot of Java. So we've just made it happen with whatever it took. Oh, I see some people are having problems with pop-up blogger. Yes, I am using the XDJS. Uh, just yeah. let me know when you get that sorted. I don't want you to miss too much of the presentation here. Okay. Is everyone getting the pop-ups or are they getting... Okay, yeah, Firefox would be best um, for this sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah, go ahead. Pop up with no content. Pop up lock here too. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll wait just a moment more and try and uh, <laughs> fill the space with something in the meantime. Uh, so it's just called CodeRunner 2, which um, I realize is rather unimaginatively named, but uh, especially at a time when even the most basic of applications have really cool and engaging names. Um, <laughs> I went with CodeRunner 2 as, uh, as step one in the familiarity piece, which uh, 
like students would at least know, like, oh, okay, this is mm -hmm. still a code runner, even right. though it looks vastly different right. than yeah. uh, the, what I'm used to seeing. Yeah. yeah, so we have three types of learning sandboxes right now. We build learning sandboxes um, as the technologies arise that need them, and, and we tend to try to keep uh, as many courses in one sandbox as possible before we build another one, but sometimes it's, uh, it's just necessary for it to do. So we started with the code runner. Uh, which deals with most of our software and some of our uh, DBA and system administrative stuff. And, uh, and then we had to create a Windows-based for .NET and other Windows-based software and also for our Java courses because they use Eclipse. And we didn't want anyone to have to download Eclipse. So we created a solution in which people would pull up a, a terminal with a virtual Windows server inside of it that already had Eclipse all ready to go in a learning format for you, so you wouldn't have to uh, do any of that yourself. And then the third one, which hasn't come out yet, is for math, and that's going to be something we talk about this fall. Okay, so are we getting screen yeah. sharing? Yeah, we, we got it. Sorry, everyone. Okay. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't realize it would pop up and you would think you have to log in. Uh, oh, no, that's master. That, that's that's <laughs> master. So this is the login screen. Uh, normally when a student logs in, they'll have their uh, dashboard and they can launch directly from there. But um, I wanted to try and keep the number of places you could log in down to a minimum. So if you wanted to go directly here, you could. And uh, Tblog One is just one of our demo accounts. So that said, this is the first thing the students see when they would lo uh, log in. Uh, if you log in from your dashboard, it will actually launch the course that you clicked on. For example, uh, I'll pull up HTML and CSS course in a moment. Uh, that would open in a tab up in the top right portion of the screen. Uh, and so, like I said, I wanted this uh, familiar to, familiarity was key for me. I wanted to make sure that students didn't have to, like, it, something that just they glanced at and they could see, oh, this looks familiar, I, and assume. Uh, maybe incorrectly, but at least assume that they could they, they would know what to do with the buttons and, and flashiness presented to them. I uh, borrowed the three panel layout uh, from Eclipse, which was another key point. We do like Chris Trish was saying, we do have a Eclipse based courses, uh, Java and, and Python, for example, mm -hmm. and it uses a similar layout. And so I wanted something that looked like similar to that. So at least students who started on this and then graduated to Eclipse, while they would have to learn a, a little, quite a bit more actually, there's a, a learning curve there. But I wanted them to be able to at least have something that looked familiar. So at least it wasn't this jarring uh, transition between the, the two or the, the two different um, learning uh, tools. Uh, so this is this is built with an HTML and, and JavaScript front end, which HTML is the most bare minimum. Um, Someone mentioned earlier EXTJS. Yeah, we're getting a lot of EXTJS love over here. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's actually entirely because of the file browser on the left. Uh, I'll talk about that in a moment because there's quite a bit I want to discuss there. But um, that uh, a, a gentleman who goes by the name of uh, Saki on the forums, I'll have a link at the end. And if you just type in file tree panel into Google, it's one of the top four hits. Had built this file browser uh, as an extension for EXTJS. A coworker showed me. Uh, that and it ended up shaving a bunch of time off the development because I didn't have to start from scratch there. And then, like we said, the, the back end is, is MySQL and C++ and PHP. Uh, this, this content panel up here, you get a little welcome screen, some little walkthrough information. You can click on your list of courses. In the previous Code Runner, you could really only have one course open at a time. So if you were Let's say you started on your HTML course, and then you went up to your PHP, but you needed to reference something that was listed in HTML. You'd have to close Code Runner 1, relaunch HTML, find the information, close it. So this way, you can just have as many open as you'd like, which could be a little bit confusing. But now I can easily click back and forth between the two. Yeah. Uh, we, we've got oh. uh, Patrick H. and uh, yeah, Patrick H. is saying this looks a little like compiler. Doc, compiler. Interface. I'm not super familiar with that, but if it's a very familiar thing, then that's what we're going for, is familiarity. Is that the one that, um, I think that's the one that someone sent around an email the other day. It looks, it's very much like a, yeah, EXTGS is sent you now. I, I wasn't sure what, uh, what to call it at the moment, because when I started it was EXTGS. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think compiler, I think I've seen compiler, and it, it is very similar to that, although I, uh, I will profess not having seen compiler before building this. I swear I didn't gank their style. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Uh, we have a question here from Jamie T. Are the courses free of charge? No, they are not. <laughs> these are consider these. These are continuing education professional development courses, uh, much like what you would get at your local college, uh, community college. Um, these are not exam prep courses for a certification. These are certificates of professional development um, that are earned upon completion of a series of courses. So um, think of them as college level courses that are continuing education and uh, uh, non-credit. Um, so to address Arena's question, which is can you resize the content, you can. Uh, these windows are collapsible and then you can actually click and drag the center bars to give yourself a little bit more space. Mm -hmm. uh, but to discuss them a little bit, this, uh, the, the, the course content in here is just uh, an iframe that's loaded from an external server where we have all our, our coursework um, so that we can just pull it in, makes it really easy for us. Uh, we do have these tabs up at the top. Um, tabbed, tabbed browsing. Is, is pretty ubiquitous at this point, and so I felt like having tabs everywhere, anywhere that was necessary for that, uh, it, it, it was going to make a lot of sense. People have seen that before. Um, and again, remember that um, a lot of our students, I, I don't know, do you know the percentage of students who have previous experience with programming? Uh, in our demographics, we about half of our students already have uh, some experience or are already in the IT field. Okay. And about half of them are looking to break into it so they don't have any programming experience at all. So I, the, I was trying to really make it as approachable as possible so that um, it's still that 50% that didn't have a lot of experience, again, it, it was something familiar with it for them. Um, and this left portion here is your, it's just a lesson listing. Each lesson have, will have a quiz or objective. Objective is kind of like a, a project, some homework. Those also open up in tabs. And uh, oh, this one requires us to hand in some files, so we'll just pull over a file real quick. Test, that's a good one. And you can add in comments and then hand it in. So the click and drag was important because that's, again, that's a, a common metaphor that people know. Um, I, I tried to go with, a unifying theme for the icons. So the, the pencil is something they haven't worked on. Hourglass is waiting to be graded. Yeah. We, we can't underestimate the importance of how easy it was for him to hand in a file. Um, it, it's, that's, that's one of the biggest things about what we're doing here is, is making it so that the only things that are not automated and easy are the things that are important to your learning. So if, if you're not spending a whole lot of time preparing a file to hand it in and using some clunky interface to hand it in, then that means you have more time to communicate with your instructor. And on the, on the flip side, the instructor has more time to communicate with you because uh, he or she doesn't have to do the same thing, you know, go and download a file and open it up and do all these things. They can look at your uh, code on the back end quickly and then communicate with you um, on a more one-on-one -on -one basis. And that's also why all our uh, assignments are open-ended because we don't have any constraints with that. We don't, so we don't have any, you know, uh, multiple choice automatically graded things, you know, you, you have an actual instructor back there. So it was really important to make that user interface um, perfect. Yeah, and uh, I do know the hand-in button's a little far down. That can be confusing. I'm working on bumping that up a little bit. <laughs> I did have a question about the, uh, the wrapping on the text of the course, and is that just a uh, problem with, with the uh, demo that we have here? See how it's, it's not mm -hmm. wrapping? You have to kind of scroll mm -hmm. back and forth. Um, no, that's probably something we should uh, work on fixing. Thank you, Irene. <laughs> Irina. I hope I said that right. Irina. Good catch. Uh, good catch on that. We will work on that. Thank you. Okay. There is a way for bulk uploads. Uh, you can do that over on the file browser. Again, I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, okay. Uh, so to finish up with the lesson listing here, the green green circle with a white check mark is. Uh, completed and you passed, there's a, a warning sign, which is triangle with an exclamation mark, mark, which means that you need to revisit it. Yeah, not necessarily, you didn't fail, but we do, we do have a policy of we want you to get it right before you move on. So the, the instructor will just keep at you and keep at you and keep at you until it's just right. Basically, basically by the time you get done with the course, you have an A. <laughs> so great questions, you guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, the bottom part here, the editor, uh, this is called edit area, and I, I 
can't remember the gentleman's name at the time, and it saves me. Um, I want to say cdolive.net. Again, if you just type in edit area in the Google, it will come up, and I'll have the link again at the end. Uh, what's, what's cosmically funny in this scenario is that while as the original code runner just had a text area HTML element which you entered it into, that's exactly what this is with just a ton of CSS applied to it. Uh, this is a, it's not a what you see is what you get editor, but it looks an awful lot like one. And so the nice part about it is that it does offer uh, syntax highlighting and line numbers. Um, which are, the line numbers are key, if, especially if you're, if you're writing a Java code, because this, uh, this preview button on Java code comes up as a compile button. And so if there's an error in your compilation, it'll come up. It'll tell you where the error, what line number. Um, it'll even print out the, I think, five lines of code surrounding it, two above and two below in the offending line. So if the line numbers were handy, because before people would get uh, if in the original code runner, they would compile, get the line number, and then have to count, which would I, just frustrating. I can't even imagine. Uh, there, you know, there's a lot of different features about uh, increasing font size to make it a little easier to see. Um, we support quite a few syntax. Um, we can actually extend that syntax. It's really easy. You can check that out on, on the guy's website as well. And then it, these icons are familiar enough to everybody that, that I would I would feel anyway that you know, people would know what they what they are. You can turn off the syntax highlighting if you wanted to with that one. And this did support a, a plug-in architecture, which allowed us to do that compile button for Java or the preview button for HTML and uh, PHP. So when you hit that, it, it calls some custom code in the, in the back end via an AJAX call. Um, I have a question. Is yep. there a way to print files? No. That's actually the first time I've, I've heard that. I can... Uh, Let's add that to the I know that there's list. a way to print lessons, you know, if you just, you know, right click on there and ha have the frame printed. Um, but I don't know about printing files. Printing files. files. Um, so. I will add that to the feature list. That should be pretty easy to, to toss in there. Yeah. Um, and then um, I did hack on this a little bit. To, we needed a terminal emulator, uh, as Trish said, because we, we create a, a home directory for people on a, on a Linux machine so that, um, they can get in there without having to download a well, putty or, or one of the other ones. Uh, so I hacked in this, this little terminal icon, which should just fire up and there we go. Uh, this actually connects to the, the server. Uh, this is all JavaScript, so it's not blo uh, rather blocked by IT departments. Um, there is a JavaScript front end, which is this portion, and then I believe uh, it's an Apache Plugin or um, Apache module on the back end. Josh Ann in the chat can confirm that for me, if you wouldn't mind, Josh. Um, and so, whereas before you only had the one terminal, if you really needed seven or eight terminals, you can, you know, have as many as you want. Because again, we added uh, the tab file browsing to get multiple files open mm -hmm. at the same time. It's the again with the original code runner, you had to open the select list to find the file name that you wanted, and then you had to also make sure that you were in the right mode, whereas this, it's literally at a glance, and then I've got my three different terminals. Oops, session closed. I clicked too quick on that one. Uh, with, with, you know, I can have different files open in here. Um, so that was, that was really handy, especially for the syntax highlighting. Um, that's one of those, those features that uh, I didn't really know about. Josh says here, uh, Josh, Josh works with us as well. Um, he says our terminal is based in shell in a box. Oh, uh, right. Unix daemon written in C, uh, which can be found at code.google.com slash p slash shell in a box. Thanks, Josh. Yeah. That, yeah. that link will be available again at the end of the slides. Yeah. Um, and then, or just, again, type in shell in a box and then you your search engine there. Oh, the, the syntax highlighting. I didn't, I didn't discover syntax highlighting until I want to say like third or fourth year of college, and if I'd had that from the beginning, it would have made learning a whole lot easier. I, I did study uh, computer science in college, mm -hmm. and so I, that was a really key feature to have that. And uh, so it was really great. And uh, oddly enough, someone had an extension for uh, yeah, AXDGS to dump this in, so that made that super simple. That's great. That's great. And uh, another question. Yeah, I had a question here. It said, uh, does the code execute in the back end? 
Um, so it depends the, on the technology. It really depends <laughs> on the technology. In this case, uh, so the Java code here is for our intro to uh, object-oriented class, which focuses on applets. So it does get compiled and saved. If you look over on the list here, I think, yeah, we got a hello world.class and the hello world.html. Yeah. Do I dare even run it? Let's see, if it <laughs> let's see if it works. I guess the answer would be if the technology needs to be run in the back end, then it yes, it's, yeah. it's run in the back end and then, and then the results are brought back to the front. Uh, a lot of times, you know, in the old code runner, uh, no the, you know, the file would run and it would literally uh, go to the back end and actually compile it on the back end and then come back with the compiling errors or whatever it is you needed to fix on the front end. Uh, now I think it's a little more seamless than that now that we have well, it still does that. It's, it's still, it still compiles into the back end and then fires you over the errors. Gotcha. But it does it in a little bit more user friendly. It allows you to fix the problem a little bit more easier right. is the best way to put it. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. And someone says... Uh, Jose, we are working on PDF or EPUB for the lessons. That is, a, uh, that is an option. And you said iPad. Here's one of the funnier things that I've, I've managed to do with CodeRunner 2. This will actually run on an iPad. I have an iPhone 3G, uh, the older one, not the super cool one. And I can actually get this to load. It doesn't run all that well, but... Um, you could actually open it up and load your courses and, and you actually use your, read your course content. I, mean, I don't know why you'd want to program I don't know why you'd want to program <laughs> not, not, uh, No, no, <laughs> I think he wants it for reading purposes and so oh, he'll be able to read the course okay. content on a separate device. Yeah. But uh, we are working on making it a, a downloadable thing yeah. uh, from within the application so that you can just have your PDFs for you. I understand if you want to read a lot and I'm a, I'm a reader too when it comes to lessons and things like that. However, um, just as a part of our methodology, our lessons actually speak to trying things within CodeRunner. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to read it through without doing anything because most of it is do this, try this, do this, try this, which is um, what we're hoping that you'll do. So that's why we haven't been super focused on, on putting it within an iPhone uh, or in a mobile device. Maybe an iPad, um, but, but the mobile device would kind of be counter productive for our purposes. Um, I have a question from Doria H. Uh, the programs are accredited through the college. Uh, we are an un unaccredited school. Uh, we have a lot of exciting things coming up, but as of now, we have a partnership with the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign, which is a very prestigious school uh, in the computer science field especially. And all our courses, uh, the CEUs, the, the continuing education units that you gain from completing our courses, along with the certificates that you earn from completing a series of courses, all come from directly from the University of Illinois at the moment. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we've had a close partnership with them since 97, 98. So they've been really great. Um, okay. Are we having more questions here? Tackle Jim's there. And <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and keep going. You just interrupted there. Go ahead. Anything else? Uh, so the last part, and the part that literally saved me the most time, is this file browser over here on the left. It, uh, I was working on uh, with jQuery initially to try and do this exact same thing, and then thought, well, someone else has to have already solve this problem. And sure enough, there was uh, Saki, S-A-K-I, file tree panel for uh, EXTJS. This thing is fantastic. Um, it's a lazy loader, which means that it only, when it loads, when it hits the, the server initially, it only grabs the directory, the, the information it needs. So when I open up the fruit directory, it'll use the AJAX pane to get all that information back. Um, this was one of the most important things for me was the file management portion of it. And I feel like this really replicates, I, well, I did my best to try and get something that, that replicated um, file management on, on most familiar OSs. Like I, and this very obviously looks like the, the windows, the default windows, since I think XP, it's been a while since I uh, went back further than that. It's beautiful. Uh, and it's gorgeous. depending on which uh, Mac OS 10 file browsing option you have selected in Finder, it could also look very similar to that. And this has a ton of features. Uh, this allows for a file movement is literally a click and drag. So let's move this profile, click and drag. So there it's listed in my temp folder, and if I go to my terminal, 
oops, I should probably change to the correct folder first. This does have tab completion, by the way, for those interested. <laughs> uh, Jose yeah, no. says, God bless the folks who uh, rock these JS frameworks. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is. There's the file that I moved there. Um, uh, and then uh, we do, like, the, the mouse over to get file information rather than having it just printed out initially in the original code runner, if you remember quite a while back, they just printed it all out on a line. It was file name and size and the last modified date. Here, if you just mouse over for it, it, it thumbs up and gives you all that information. Zero boy byte files are always exciting. Yeah, um, I think that's one of the, the best aspects of this entire thing is that the file lister being right there. You don't have to open up a window. And it, well, and it's collapsible, so it doesn't take up so much room. Yeah. With the original code runner, it was either, you, mm -hmm. pardon me, you either had the half and half display or it was all content or all, mm -hmm. uh, all, all editor window, which, yeah. uh, it was great. I mean, it worked great for the time, but having the resizing thing, I think, really helps. And, and, then, and then having to pop up the windows just to look at your files yeah, and try to figure yeah. out what's going on, that was ridiculous. Yeah, basically, you know, in, in the old code runner, we were basically emulating, you know, how files would be listed out in a Linux-based terminal, um, just in a web-based format. And now we have something that looks a lot more like your desktop. It looks a lot more like something that you're used to and and is visually obvious uh, what to do. Not necessarily obvious, but but um, easier to get over that learning curve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, and then the, so the, the click and drag for for moving files, uh, I mean, I, I, I can't think of an OS where that, that doesn't work like that, at least not in the last five or ten years. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that's familiar, folks, as well as the right click. So when you right click, you get this context menu, and I, I would think, again, um, I would, was it control click? Contr control or command click on, mm -hmm. on Mac? I have a Mac, but I uh, mapped all my keys. I can't even remember now. I think it's control click. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. um, so I hacked this a little bit as well. Um, I've got, I added the open edit, open an editor because this is the default action when you double click the item or if you select the item and hit enter. So trying to keep those icons as consistent across there. So the open an editor one obviously just opened it over in the editor. It's an empty file. That's why there's nothing there. Um, reload is one of those options for um, the, uh, the folders. Uh, because there, I haven't yet figured out a way to get the terminal to tell, because the terminal, the terminal application itself sort of exists in outside the, the scope of the uh, file browser. So I'm trying to figure out a way to communicate back to the file browser to reload the appropriate file folder if a file is created. But at the moment, like if I create a file in a tasty test, it won't show. If I create it here in the terminal, it won't show up here. So you'd have to right click and then reload, which, I mean, a little bit unfortunate, but I'm still working on getting that. Uh, rename, delete, new folder, those are all common. I hacked in the copy paste because most people are, again, familiar with the right, right click to copy something and, the left cl uh, and then right click again to paste it. Uh, you can also use the shortcut keys, control C. Uh, and then for the bulk file upload, you can, uh, you can add individual files here, but if you're, I, would only, I only include this one if you want to load one file. But if you're going to include multiple files, click the upload file button, and then you get this little panel. That will allow you to add it. It opens up a, there we go, you know, just a, a typical uh, OS window, and you can navigate through. And I believe you have to add them one at a time. You might be able to multi-click. I think actually you can multi-click. But then you would just click the upload button. It'll go down the list. It'll fire them off one at a time. And if there's any errors, they'll appear over here on the right. Uh, we have a question from Jose. Yeah. Uh, we may have already answered this one. Now that you're talking about fonts, can we have a choice to change the font for something more readable? After all, not everybody has perfect vision. Man, I'm getting a huge feature request. Yeah, man. I don't see why we couldn't do that. I thought I thought, well, there's definitely a way to change well, the font in the, change the font size. Uh, lesson. Yeah. Oh, you can increase yeah. font size. Oh, I, I guess I should ask for clarification, Jose. Do you mean the, the course content or the, uh, the editor or everything? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I want to say right now you can change the font in the lesson and you can change the font, I believe, in the actual text area part, but mm -hmm. not in the terminal part, correct? Yeah, the terminal. Can, can you change the font in the text area? Uh, no, the, no. The actual it's just, part? Nope, it's just okay. the uh, font size at the moment. 
font size. Well, but if you change the font size, though, well, then what you type in makes it easier. So we've just gone with this. I mean, it could be even difficult for other people to read, though. So it's not a, it wouldn't be a difficult feature to add. So I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Droid Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Can you uh, add a font to that list? That yeah, yeah, font to... size. Um, no, font, font. I'm, I'm, I'm currently creating a list from all your wonderful suggestions because okay, we have a lot of OST students uh, on the line right now, which is great. I'm so glad that you guys are here because these are things that we need to hear. So uh, we're getting our list going. Um, Josh does say, Josh Nutzman does say, we're hoping to work with the author of Shell in a Box to add some new features to the terminal. Um, however, he currently has a new baby, so it might be a little <laughs> while. Baby. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's great. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I've missed with this. Oh, all these uh, menu items are also available from up here. If you you have to select an item first. If you don't have anything selected, it will just gray out that menu. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then uh, M. Yeah, if you hit the, if you can select with the arrow keys and you can use the M key on your keyboard, M as in Mary, to to then navigate through these items as well. I was I was trying to do my best to make this as usable as possible. Um, for people who who have a hard time using uh, mice or you know uh, external uh, input like that. So <clears throat> I'm, I really tried my best to to make sure that you can use keyboard shortcuts where possible. To, uh, to do, like you can use control, you have to make sure that the editor has focus, but if you control S, it'll save the file and, nope, it's O, control O loads the file because L always puts you in the, oh, in, in, a, in, in any, uh, in most browsers anyway, control L will put you in the address bar. So. Great, great. And it is control on the, for the Mac users out there, you, you still have to use control. I, I have a suggestion from Doria. Says, why not add an option, submit suggestions? Well, that would just be far too clever, <laughs> and uh, build in quite a bit of job security <laughs> for myself. So I, I will say this: if I'm you putting have that at the top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> if you have suggestions, then um, definitely write us at info at oreillyschool.com. Until I get or, that button in there. Or yeah, or you can send them to our Twitter account. Uh, that's uh, twittercom slash School. We have a Facebook account, facebook.com slash O'Reilly School. We can get suggestions there. We'd love to hear from you guys. We just got a brand new LinkedIn account. So, you know, we're all over the place. Just just bring it. Bring I tried it. to web 2.0 this with the Ajax. I haven't quite gotten the crowdsourcing portion down yet. I apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. There you go. Yeah, thank you, Captain. Uh, so that's that's all there is for the uh, for the visual portion there, the interactive bit, which is largely you just watching me be interactive, but still. Um, oh, one last piece. There is um, messages here, so there's a way to communicate with your mentor who is an actual person. So you don't have to. Before again, you'd have to. Did you have to go out? You know, you had to change tabs. It was in the code runner one. Well, you did have this, but we've got the. It was there, but it wasn't very nice. Yeah. So this, you can you know send your mentor a message from internally and check and see if they've replied. Um, there are a little help window up here. It has three short little uh, screencasts that I did that show you how to use the features for, for new students, which is handy. And then props to the people who helped out. So as you can, uh, I can't think what Rodrigo pointed out that, or Jose maybe, the, the silk icons, that's famfamfam.com. Um, those are great icons. There's, I think, over 700 of them. I ended up using those because uh, Zachy with the file tree browser, or file tree panel rather, he, he used those for his icons and so to keep it uniform. I just snagged that. I think they're awesome. I would use them again in an instant. And then there's a link to the file tree panel, the edit area, and the shell in a box. <laughs> Love it. Love I love it. it. I, I have a comment here from Doria from yeah. a while back. It says, laziness is the mother of invention. And we all know that as programmers, we're lazy, but we work hard at being lazy. And uh, being a student is no exception. I don't know about you guys, but when I was a student at the University of Illinois in the computer science uh, department, if, if I had to sit and watch some lecturer write code up on the screen, and just sit there and be passive. I just thought, I'm wasting my time. And um, so I just wanted to go and try it myself. So I completely understand that. And that's a lot of our own laziness um, kind of came about in these really slick features because we thought, well, if I'm learning, 
uh, this technology. I, I don't want to deal with all this. And then there's the other side of it, which is people who are intimidated by all this stuff and don't realize that HTML really, you know, is you can learn it, you know, but, but when you have to go through all the stuff of getting an account and, and getting everything set up for yourself and configuring it right, then the intimidation factor comes in. So that's why we did all this slick stuff because we're lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that was Code Runner 2. Um, I was really hoping, oops, uh, I was so, like, like I said, I, I really studied a lot of the, the, the emails we got from students, a lot of the tickets that came in from them. Uh, asking about, well, I'm trying to copy a file, how do I do that? And, and I, I took all those, you know, compiled them into a big list and then tried to find the commonalities, you know, the, real, the actual real problems with the, the UI that we were having and, and sort that out into, into a user interface and hopefully a user experience that was easier for people to, uh, to use right away, to, to get that first vital 15 minutes. Um, in, so that they, were, they weren't learning the tool, and if they were learning the tool, it was a five or ten minute thing. I think the total running time of all three of those screen, screen tasks is less than ten minutes or so. So even if they had to watch stuff, they're still, we're still in five minutes into that course. <laughs> um, um, we, we actually have a feature request about being able to reply directly to the instructor and ask more questions from the graded objector request window. We already have a way to communicate when you're handing something in. Yeah, that actually is on the list. Um, That's a there's great that one, the re, 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 uh, replying to the instructor from the graded area as well as once you've <laughs> passed the quiz, being able to look back at your previous, right. uh, your previous attempts or previous answers. So uh, those, those are in the works right now. Code Runner 3, so 1997 <laughs> to 2000. Peter F. asks, when will Code Runner 3 be out? Yeah. <laughs> So we did 13 years on the first That's one, awesome. I think. <laughs> We're going to try and do, I'm going to try and half that. <laughs> try and do it in seven. Well, we'll try to get quicker on the updates with that. You know, I, I'm so thrilled with what Matt has done here that I don't mind being roasted here and, uh, and all the things we <laughs> We learned a lot in the last 13 years of doing this, and, and I'm really proud of, of the kind of, um, you know, trailblazing that we did in this sort of thing, and, and I feel like because of it, we're in a great position to uh, to keep going with it and to, uh, you know, really hit the 21st century yeah. hard. <laughs> and so the, the last little pieces here I just want to share, uh, some cool things we're doing with Code Runner 2 is, is that uh, Josh, Josh N. in the uh, group chat there, he's, he's sort of reworked it for our course authors, the people who write the, the course content. Um, they're, they're now order, able to uh, log into Code Runner 2 and they can reorder the, the lessons as they, uh, as they see it by click and drag and, and using the, it's basically the same as the, uh, when you're viewing the lesson where there's the lesson listing on the left and then the co content on the right. And um, I thought that was a pretty neat little thing to do. It's just a, I mean, I don't want to speak for you, Josh, but I think it was just a short little weekend project. Um, and then, so once you did that, we thought about maybe extending it to be able to do course authoring so that they would actually just use it too and sort of be like a, that's less interesting for the students, I think, and more for me, but <laughs> I thought it was fun. Definitely We're sharing, interesting like, for me. It's a really cool, really cool little piece that Josh yeah. has done there, so thanks for that, Josh. Yeah, that's, that's going to be great because we, we are trying to get more courses out and faster and more efficiently, and that makes, that, really that requires do, making think. things uh, easier for the author, you know, on the back end. And so we've got a lot of clunkiness to work out there. Yeah. Um, I do have a quick question. Can I sync my messages with my email um, from Rodrigo? I do not know that. I don't know. I believe you might get an email message when you get a message, but I think it's just a part of our database system, and that's a, that's a great suggestion. So That will be we'll less easy to add, but yeah, that will be put it on the list. Yes, um, so that's Code Runner 2. Here's a, a list of all the bits and the, the URLs for them. And again, if you just type in the, the header one, like Edit Area Foundry Panel, I'm pretty sure it'll be one of the top five hits on, on your uh, search engine. <laughs> Great. Um, and also, we had a quick question. How about uh, a course group at Convor? Uh, I'm, not sh I'm not super familiar with Convor. 
Um, I will say that we have been looking at social media ways to um, create more, facilitate more communication between students themselves. Um, the, the problem that we run up against is everyone uses a different social media medium, um, and so we don't want to force anyone, yeah. everyone to use Facebook. We don't want to force everyone to use anything here. Twitter. So we got it. We, we're trying to figure out a solution that kind of incorporates. Um, what's great about social media uh, without constraining you at all as students. I mean, yeah, forcing the student to do. Yeah, so we're working on that. So, um, so I'm free for any other questions if y'all are interested or curious. Uh, Rohan uh, says, when will mathematics become available? I'm going to step out on that one. That's all trash. Um, I, I don't want to make any guarantees, but uh, I want to say this fall. I know that we've been working on it really hard for years. It's so exciting. I, I, I can't tell you how excited I am about these math courses because uh, they've been coming full circle since when I was in college. And, um, and the new learning sandbox for math using Wolfram's Mathematica software is incredible that we built. Um, so stay tuned because Believe me, when it happens, I'm going to be having a webcast about it and maybe multiple webcasts about it, and we're going to be blogging about it, and uh, the, it, it, we're just going to be beside ourselves excited. Uh, how about a tech writing course? Yes, that is part of our list that we're working on. Um, tech writing, um, project management, um, we're definitely looking at Ruby classes. We're working on that now. Um, it takes a while because, like I said, you know, this. These learning sandboxes, they are not simple. And uh, probably the hardest thing about uh, outputting courses in a timely manner is making sure that they work properly so that they um, are the true experience of working within that technology or that um, uh, whatever you're learning. However, uh, making it so that it comes through your web browser without having to download, without having to install anything. That's the special sauce that we try to keep uh, going there, which makes it more difficult for us <laughs> to write courses. Um, All right, Ben, that was a great comment. What did Ben say? <laughs> Tech docs is though docs matter. <laughs> like slide five. <laughs> I, I, I would like to take this public forum to officially apologize to Matt for being horrible about documentation in the <laughs> 10 years that I built CodeRunner 1. My mea culpa. I deserve the roast that I got. Um, and let's see, we have, so I hope you guys, you know, it, it, it appears that we have, okay, Android course. Uh, we're looking at ways of uh, teaching mobile apps through our system. It's tough because uh, there are some emulators out there, but they only work with certain platforms. Yeah, I'd like to, I'm, I haven't really talked too into Android yet. I have done a little bit of iPhone development, and you're sort of locked into that. Um, you're sort of like you have to pay to have the you get the air. It, not, you don't have to pay for the you have to pay for the most recent one, but the, I'm skipping on the name, the Xcode thing. But so like you have to there'd be a licensing thing there. I, I'm not sure about Android if there's any, yeah. anything. Yeah, so we're we're definitely working on it. Uh, jQuery is is at the top of our list. I believe we're already writing that one. Oh, Mike, um, Michael L is is one of our mentors as well. He's he's the guy who's in charge of the Eclipse courses. Yeah, okay. So this is wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. I know we got to go. It's 11 o'clock. I hope you'll join us at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time, I believe, on July 15th for my talk with Jonathan Reichenthal, the CIO of O'Reilly, talking about jobs and how to get a job. Um, and then on July 29th, uh, tune in for our news desk at OSCON. I think that'll be at 1 p.m. Pacific time. And I'll be uh, having a debate, a Perl versus Python debate. Peter Scott versus Steve Holden. It's going to be fun. So uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks again. I really appreciate the suggestions uh, for making a better application. So I appreciate your time, and uh, thank you very much. And thanks to Matt. All right, All right. see you guys later. Bye.